How's it going, super friends? Today, I'm gonna be reviewing the SH Figwarts and Justice Gods Among Us Batman action figure. It's new to me as of today, so I figured why not do a review of it? Also, I've already reviewed the Superman figure from the Injustice Gods Among Us line by SH Figwarts, so if you'd like to check that video out too, the link will be in the description down below. Anywho, on with the review. Now the packaging for this figure is pretty standard for an SH Figwarts figure because you've got the window box in the front, an image of the figure on the side. On the back you've got promo images of the action figure itself in various poses with a little blurb. SH Figwarts is a new standard figure series that incorporates the Bandai action figure art under the theme pursuing character expression through humanoid action. And I gotta say, they have been killing it. I pretty much like everything that they do. I like the quality of these figures, so I'm more than stoked to be opening this one up. So let's just get them out of the package, shall we? Pop the top, yoink him out. Oh, there's some instructions on the inside too. Get on out of there. Anyhow, here's what you get. So I'm gonna be very careful not to, oh, well look at that. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting all the stuff to just fall out of the front like it usually, oh. All right, so once you've got him out of the package and you have the cape all put together and installed on his back, the plastic posy cape, then this is what you get. This is the basic figure without any of the other hands or the head installed. So aside from the figure, you get this plethora of other things in the package. You get this really interesting sort of looking grapnel gun, a bat grappling hook, a really, really long bat grappling hook that, that feeds into the end of the gun. You get two batarangs, two sets of open hands, two closed fisty hands, and also a hand specifically designed for grabbing the bat grapple. And then finally we have this extra head that comes with the figure, which is probably the face that I will use on the body and not the masked version. Popping the new head on is actually pretty simple. There's a hole here and there's a peg there, and you know the drill, just put the peg in the hole. and. And then the head's on the body. And you know what? I'm just going to show you Batman's armored head up close. That way, I don't have to do the rest of the review with the armored head on Batman's body. Truthfully, it's not my favorite iteration of what Batman's mask and helmet could look like. Now, this figure is covered in awesome details and paint apps. They have different tones of gray and silver and black being used on this figure all over the place. And they've even got some battle damage in his gauntlets in the way of nicks and scrapes and the little scallops on his gloves. Even they've got the details of battle damage. The utility belt has a whole lot of detail put into it. All the gray and the black and the different tones of silver that are used are fantastically painted and I can't see any paint slop on this figure whatsoever. I love the use of the matte black in certain areas and that's contrasted by the shiny silver in other places. Not to mention that the detail work on this figure is not only accurate but incredibly fun. All the different scrapes and cuts in his gauntlets and in his scallops and his knee pads, you really get a feeling that this Batman has seen some serious hard times in Gotham City while fighting the Superman regime. So this figure is automatically going to get very, very high marks for me as far as the overall look of the action figure. All right, so before we get into the actual articulation of the figure, let's just take a moment to focus on the cape because I'm gonna pull this right off because it's gonna be in the way and noisy and stuff like that. So the cape itself is made out of, as you can see, a hard plastic and it attaches in the back via a little peg like this and just fits right in there like that. And honestly, I would have probably gone with a cloth goods cape and not a plastic cape if I wanted to have an articulated cape in this Batman figure because I'm not a huge fan of the evil butterfly looking cape, nor am I of the fancy man's mustache. So personally, this cape is not a selling point for me. I'm, I'm not a fan. So I'm just going to take it off right now so that we can get into the rest of the articulation. So Batman has articulation in the neck and the head by way of a ball joint, and this means he can look down pretty far, which is very cool. However, looking up, he's not helped by the two articulation points that he has. He has articulation in the shoulders by way of a butterfly hinge, which is very cool, and his shoulders can go in quite a ways. The shoulder pauldrons do move out of the way a little bit. However, there is not a lot of upward motion as far as the articulation goes for this figure. 
Batman's torso is joined together by a ball joint, and there's quite a bit of range of movement as far as side to side, and round to round, and up and down. Batman has waist articulation as well, and he can spin around 360 degrees. He's got a bicep swivel, which means that they can go around 360 degrees, giving him lots of articulation, as well as having double jointed elbows as well, which is always a fan favorite. Batman's wrists are on a hinge peg as well, so they can spin round and round 360 degrees, as well as move forward and backwards with a good range of movement. Batman's also got articulation at the top of the glove as well, so that his gloves can rotate 360 degrees. Batman's groin articulation is actually two ball joints, as you can see here, which is cool, as well as having two drop hinges, so both of his legs can go right down. They can move side to side quite a bit as well, so there's a lot of articulation there, as well as having having double jointed knees, which again is always a fan favorite. And they've got about this much articulation back and forth. Batman's ankle articulation is pretty cool because he has ankle rockers, so they can go side to side a whole lot. They're also on a ball joint, so they can go round and round, as well as being on a hinge, so they have lots of up and down motion, and he has toe articulation, so there's a lot of foot articulation for this Batman figure. Okay, so, so far I'm impressed. The next thing we need to do is our size and scale comparison, and then we'll come to our final conclusion. So I think it makes sense that the first figure I would compare it to would be Mattel's version of the Injustice Batman, and you can see that they're actually almost pretty much the same size. The noodle on the SH Figuarts Batman is just a little bit bigger, but other than that, they're very much in the exact same scale. Next we have Mattel's version of the Injustice 2 Batman made out of die-cast metal with train wreck articulation. And you can see that the SH Figuarts is much, much smaller, although they're both dubbed as being six inch scale figures. Oh yeah, I also swapped the heads on this figure because I didn't want the head that came on on account of it looked like a robotic fox mask. Next we have him compared to my version of a DC Icons Batman. Again, it's had a head swap, but you can see here that the DC Icons has a much more petite body in comparison to the S.H. Figuarts Batman. And then finally, it only makes sense that I would bring out the S.H. Figuarts and Justice Gods Among Us Superman figure to stand next to him for scale because, well, they're made by the same company and they're part of the exact same line. And as you can see, they look fabulous next to each other and they scale perfectly. I'm going to take a lot of really fun pictures with these two. So now that we've got all that out of the way, comparisons, paint apps, details, articulation, the final question I need to ask myself is, was it worth it? Was it worth $40 that I paid for this figure plus shipping, or did I pay too much for it? I think he's definitely worth the time and effort to order him in because this Batman figure has a lot of articulation, clean paint apps, and plenty of accessories. And those are things that a lot of people who collect figures really look for. Now I would like to say I'm going to dock one mark because having a plastic cape on this figure that is three pieces on hinges really gets in the way and it makes him very back heavy and it can be incredibly tricky to pose him and balance him at times without him falling over because he didn't come with a figure stand. I personally would have gone with a cloth goods cape with wires in it if you wanted to have a poseable cape rather than this big, heavy, rattly, clunky plastic cape. Other than that, I really do think this figure is worth your time and effort to track down. But with that, I think I'm done. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you've enjoyed it, found it useful, insightful, or even a reasonable waste of time, please take the time to leave a like on it. That way I know I'm doing something right. If you have anything to say about this figure at all, maybe you own it and you hate it, maybe you don't have it and you want it, let me know down in the comments section below. And finally, if you think you'd like to become a super friend and join the DC squad, well just hit that subscribe button. Remember to ding that bell so that you never miss a video and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome day, super friends. Take care.